So in this video, we are going to make this environment inside Unreal Engine 5. So this is going to be a beginner friendly video as all of my videos are. And you will also learn about uh, how to create animation. So we are going to uh, render a small cinematic at the end of the video. So you will learn about the sequencer and uh, animating the camera as well. But first, this video is sponsored by Cinepack. Cinepack is a huge collection of pre-animated, fully customizable, professional camera moves created for Blender. You can choose from a massive library of camera animations. Cinepack has a very simple user interface and you don't need to have any prior experience in animation or cinematography. I feel that Cinepack is a must have for Blender users as this is going to take your animations to the next level. Cinepack is available on the Blender market. You can get it just for $30. So if you're interested, I will leave a link down in the description. So let's start by creating a basic level. You can press Ctrl N on your keyboard and then you can select the basic level template from here. We are going to start by adding in some Quixel assets. So you can go to Quixel bridge right here. We are going to use this asset pack for this video. So I've downloaded some of these assets. Make sure that you're downloading it on the nanite quality and add it in your scene. So you can select any asset that you like and you can import it in the project. So after importing all of the assets in your project, I'm going to import the third person template as well. So I'm going to use the third person template as a character scale reference. So whenever you're creating an environment, it's always a good practice to have a character model as the scale reference. After that, let's start making this environment. So to make this environment, we are going to go under the 3D assets folder. And this is where all our 3D models are stored. So I'm going to go right here and turn on the static mesh filter. That filter is going to allow me to view all of these assets at once. And we are going to start by placing a ground asset in the level. Now you can press Ctrl D and you can duplicate that asset. Again here, I'm going to use the same asset for the sake of this video, but you can use multiple assets if you wanted to. So I'm going to make a basic ground right here. Also, it's really important to create some height variation. So I'm going to rotate these assets like that. After that, I'm going to add a ridge asset in my scene. So this is just a ridge asset. Place it somewhere like this. So this is very easy and you can add your own assets if you wanted to. You don't need to follow exactly what I'm doing. Like you can experiment with different assets. So the more time you spend on this, the better results you'll get. So I'll recommend that you add a lot of different Quixel assets and merge them together. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep things simple. So I'm going to stop here. Now let's take care of the lighting. So let's rotate the direction light. To rotate the direction light, you can press Ctrl L. And while holding down control, you can move the mouse to rotate the sun. After that, you can select the sky atmosphere object. And in the sky atmosphere settings, you can change the atmospheric scattering color. So just change this color to white. And under the atmospheric me scattering, you can change the me scattering to uh, about 0.5. Now let's create a camera. So let's go to the create panel right here and under the cinematics, let's add a camera. You can right click on the camera and snap it to the viewport view. You can go right here in the perspective view and you can select the camera for the camera view. So this is the camera view. If you select the camera, you have a lot of different settings under the details panel. So you can change these settings if you want. So you can change the lens to a 30 millimeter prime lens. So our environment looks good, but I feel that our environment is lacking something. So we have some elements in the foreground. We have some elements in the mid ground, but we don't have some elements in the background. So let's go ahead and add some mountains in the background. So I made this mountain mesh in a program called Gaia. 
And Gaia is a procedural tool that you can use to create landscapes. So I went ahead and I imported that mountain inside Unreal Engine. So you are going to find this mountain mesh in the starter project. So before following this video, make sure that you download the starter project. So it's completely free. I will leave a link down in the description. So I'm going to move the mountain in the background and you can now scale this, rotate this and position this however you like. So after adding some mountains in the background and after changing the lighting a bit, our environment looks pretty good. Now we can start creating the animation. So for the animation, we are going to go to cinematics right here and we are going to create a level sequence. So after saving this, you will see a new panel open up called the sequencer panel. So the sequencer panel is very similar to any video editing application that you have used. So this is basically a timeline. So we have the timeline slider right here. We have the timeline start and end positions. So I'm going to change the end position of my animation to about 200 frames. And now we are going to animate the camera. So to animate the camera, you need to drag the camera from the world outliner into the sequence. So just drag it and drop it into the sequence. So now the cinematic camera is a part of our animation sequence. Now to animate this, we are going to go to the first frame and we are going to choose the starting position of our camera. So this is the position where we want our animation to start. So I'm going to just move my camera until I get something that I like. So this looks pretty good. After that, you can go under the transform and you can add a transform keyframe. After that, let's go to the last frame. We are going to create a zoom in animation. So we are going to move the camera inwards, something like this. And we are going to add a transform keyframe. And now you can play the animation and you can see that we have successfully animated the camera. So after that, it's time to render this. So I'm going to show you a very simple way of rendering things inside Unreal Engine. This is the basic way of rendering things. But if you want to learn how to use the movie render queue, I have made videos on that as well. So I'll leave some links down in the description. You can check those out. But as this is a beginner friendly video, we are going to use the sequencer to render this. So you can press that button in the sequencer and that's going to open up the render movie settings. So first we have the image output format. So this is the actual file format. You can leave it at the default setting. So this is a video format. Next we have audio. So if you want to render audio, you can choose to render that as well. After that, we have the frame rate. We have resolution. So you can change the resolution to 1080p. Under the compression, you can increase it to the maximum value. And this will give you the highest quality possible. Under the general settings, we have the output directory. So this is where your actual video file is going to be stored. After that, under the animation, under the advanced settings, you can choose to render a section of this animation. So currently we are rendering this whole animation, but if you wanted to render a part of this animation and not the full animation, you can do that as well. After that, we have the warm up frame count settings. So set this to 32 and set these two options to one second. So these warm up frame options will help the post processing effects to settle down. So this looks pretty good. So after you have configured all of these render settings, you can press the capture movie button and that is going to render out your animation. And yeah, that's it. So this is how easy it is to create something like this inside Unreal Engine 5. So I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to see you in the next video.